Hey folks, thanks for coming out to our latest auction video today. You'll find this in RoushHouse.com under the heading M205. Folks, this is a really, really unique piece of property and I'm super excited about it. You're gonna see the inside of a mid-1800s Italianate, which there's hardly any around in Northern Indiana or Southern Michigan, uh, let alone being in this good a condition, partially remodeled, for sale at auction. Not only are you buying this property that is a retired antique dealership, you're buying it with all of its contents. And some of the things that are in this home that these people have repurposed is just absolutely amazing. You're gonna buy a barn that's full of inventory. You can come in here, set up a bed and breakfast, a law office, an insurance office, or just live here and enjoy yourself, or go right back into business selling antiques. Folks, we're gonna show you a lot of stuff today, so let's get at it. Hey, so just to give you an idea of what we're talking about here with this home, guys, uh, this is, again, mid-1800s Italianate. Uh, I'm told 1847, 1850, somewhere in there. The main walls on the original structure of this home are literally three full brick thicknesses, okay? Because that's how these homes were built when the European settlers came over and built stuff like they did in Europe. It is just amazing. It is going to blow your mind, some of the things that you're going to see inside this home. A lot of it's been renovated. Uh, some painting was starting to be done. Um, it, it's hard to show this on camera, but there are literally original panes of glass in some of the windows in this home where the glass is wavy because of its age. Folks, I just can't tell you how cool this property is, and I'm going to try to show you every square inch of it. You can see that we're on a fairly busy road. At, at the moment, there's no cars, but here comes a couple. We've been actually trying to time our, our video so that you can hear me with the traffic. And, and if you're thinking about maybe making this a business, I didn't get traffic counts on this, but I'm telling you, this is a busy area. This is old M205, which basically connects 19 coming north out of Elkhart and US-12, which, was the, which is the main east-west cut across in southern Michigan. The point to that is, is that you get a ton of traffic that comes by here, people going up to the lakes. There's a toll road entrance and exit five minutes from here by Simonton Lake. Um, if you're thinking about turning this into a business, it's extremely easy access. And again, when we get inside the house in those three thick brick walls, you can see the cars, but you can't hear them. So in the spirit of kind of giving you an idea of everything that's going on here, again, this is kind of a little bit of a one-off situation for us because we're selling this property as it sits with everything in it, with a few exceptions in the house. For instance, whoever's winning bidder gets the keys at closing. Uh, I'll tell you what, I'll even have a tank of gas and the battery charged in the mower. You can come mow your grass right when you get here. I'm going to put this garage at about 22 feet wide by 30 feet long. Um, Concrete's in good shape, roof's in good shape, opener, garage door. Uh, I really don't really find a lot of fault with anything here. Somebody's going to be able to move right in and start living. We have just over three acres here. I just wanted to get a couple shots outside. We've got a lot of ground to cover, uh, no pun intended, but to give you an idea of how much space is here. Being under five acres in Cass County, you can't have animals for 4-H or anything but you could, there's plenty of room to build a pole building or two here if you wanted more storage space. We're gonna show you the barn in a minute. And there is actually acreage available right beside this place to the east for pretty reasonable money if somebody wanted to add acreage to that Had the actual antique business. We opened up the big door on the side, which they usually didn't open up. Usually there's a, a man door entrance at the end by the, by the sales counter. But we're going to try to get some shots in here of the stuff that's still left that somebody could open up and turn the open sign on right now and start selling and it's all staying, okay? All this inventory. Now if this isn't your bag, you can throw all this stuff in a dumpster and use this to store your boat, your collector cars, whatever. Although the barn is not huge, I'll put it at about 36 by 40, 45. Um, again, there is plenty of space, two different areas on this property where you could build a gigantic pole building for storage and not really be in the way of anything else you're doing here. Many of you that have seen our videos before uh, realize that we don't oftentimes spend a lot of time in a foyer, uh, but wow, uh, there's just so many cool things. A lamp, statues, shelving, some sort of an old cast iron piece from a sewing machine or a heating vent. The wallpaper alone, the wall hangings, 
every square inch of this house is going to be sold basically just like it sits here. Again, there will be a few exceptions and we'll try to note those as we go through, but somebody's going to buy this place ready to roll. So as we said, everything literally comes with the house. And if you're bringing a dog or some little kids, there's going to be cookies and dog biscuits in the jars ready to go. Folks, it's just really hard to tell you how cool this place is. We're in the kitchen right now, which I'm told used to be the dining room in the original structure. Um, everything's updated. We've got a dishwasher, Samsung three-door fridge, awesome old built-in pantry, um, porcelain farm sink, which you'll see in some of the still photos. This butcher block literally is rough and dented in where meat was literally cut on this in some butcher shop years ago. And as we've told you, everything comes with, with the exception of a couple of skillets, everything you see in this room is basically coming with the house. We are in what is now the laundry room, but I'm told that in the 60s, remember when the kitchen was the original dining room, this was the kitchen that the people used. There's actually a cool 90 degree sink over here in the corner, which is just basically being used as a laundry sink and, and folding area. The appliances, of course, stay. The computers will be leaving, but the stained glass, the blinds, the cuckoo clock, everything else that's in here is basically staying, and you're going to get a kick out of this little half bath. Normally, we would not video a half bath, but there's just not one square inch in this house that doesn't have something significant. The sink uh, is repurposed out of what they call a music cabinet. Maybe around the turn of the century that would have held sheet music uh, from a composer or someone who taught music or something like that. There's just cool things in every square inch of this house. I think I'm in the biggest bathroom that I've ever set foot in with all the videos that I've done. Uh, and one thing I failed to mention in the other rooms is that I think we're looking at 11 or 11 and a half foot tall ceilings. All of the doors are eight foot. They all weigh like 150 pounds. This thing is just awesome. I love this house. Um, in this bathroom, there's even cool stuff. Uh, I'm not sure what these were, but these are, these are some sort of a, a blown glass situation, globes on these lights. We've got a buffet that's been turned into a sink. It, it's almost like Pinterest and Etsy before they were cool. Um, we've got a fiberglass walk-in tub surround. Perfect opportunity to just rip that out and tile all this in with some beautiful tile or marble. We've also got a clawfoot tub for taking baths and, of course, water closet. Um, plenty of storage. We just want to try to get every square inch. Again, everything stays. You know, this is the type of home structure that was built with timber that was on this property. I, I just... It's amazing, okay, but I don't want to I don't want to belabor all that just because that's a love of mine This is what I would call a parlor maybe or this could be an office in a retail situation um, And the camera is in what they've been using is the dining room that could easily be an art gallery a reception area for a business What have you everything in here stays? This is kind of their little hangout sitting room. There's a TV in here uh, Some books wall hangings. I'm just wow all kinds of cool stuff there's, there's longhorn bullhorns above the door. They're all gonna be here when you show up. So we're just gonna kinda keep filming as we go, uh, walking back into what they've been using as the dining room. Here's some of your stained glass items that are stained. We've got some beautiful leaded glass above the door. There's a gigantic piece over here in the dining room. I, I don't even know what it is or what it would be used for. I'm told that it'd be so heavy you'd have to take it out of here in pieces anyway. Um, as this room goes, there is a chance that the dining room table will not be included, uh, but everything else literally is staying. Some sort of a peacock light up lamp thing, I, I don't even know. It's just everywhere I look, it's just so much cool stuff. The living room, uh, I think this was always the case. Notice that this at some point was an exterior wall, uh, or it's just a support wall in the original structure because again, this entire home is built out of three uh, thick brick walls. Um, again, jam-packed, corner to corner. There's just stuff everywhere. Fireplace over here, the TV will be here, the pillow, the blanket, it's all staying, uh, with the exception of a writing desk in the corner and its contents. Literally everything you see in this room is staying. Okay, because of my construction background, it's really hard for me not to harp on the architecture and the history and just the, the, the sheer magnitude of, of what's going on in a property like this. But as I look around, I'm in the master bedroom right now. 
Um, you know, I'm seeing a few plaster cracks here and there. And to be honest with you, if that sort of thing is going to drive you crazy, then you shouldn't even be taking a look at this property. You buy a property like this to preserve this piece of history and to do the right thing for the structure, whether you live here or own a business. Enough soapbox. Everything in this room is staying, with the exception possibly of that dresser, uh, the makeup area here. There's a, there's a TV on a wall hanger. There's three gigantic uh, antique armoires. It's all staying. Um, folks, uh, oh, central air, I, I wanted to mention. It was extremely hot outside. We're in the house right now with a fairly new Lennox HVAC system, uh, air conditioner and furnace. It is completely comfortable in here right now. We're out in what uh, originally was a deck built off of, this is the kitchen, and that was the laundry room that we just came out of. Um, they had a hot tub out here for a while, so this is structurally very sound. Um, we've got kind of, a, kind of a little bit of a sloped roof here, but I'll also mention that as this is an Italian, it's got all flat roofs, and all of that rubber was done about 15 years ago. I'm going to have my roof guy come out and inspect all of that. Um, again, just to give you an idea, here's a whole other area of space available to do things, to entertain. You can put another hot tub out here, whatever you wanted. Uh, and everything stays. So this end of the uh, of the sun porch, I'll call it, this, this deck floor area, uh, contains a couple of interesting pieces. This bench actually came from, she said, the Paris flea market. Paris, France, okay? The cool thing about this house is that you're not just getting it with some inventory you could throw in the barn and sell. This is the stuff that an antique dealer kept for their own furnishings, okay? Um, and there's going to be a lot of that that you're going to see, a lot of it that you have seen. I can't even describe it all. Uh, we're going to head upstairs in a little bit and then talk about the mechanicals down in the basement then. We are in the original foyer of the home, which they basically have used for storage. I know, right? This is just, this is amazing. This has got the old flush bolts at the top. Again, the molding. Uh, sorry for me standing here holding my own light, but uh, this is an area of the house that they basically from here and all the upstairs that we're going to show you used for storage and things that they haven't gotten to yet including the upstairs so you're going to see some wallpaper that's partly tore out you're going to see some original framing in some areas um, and it's like a clean slate this, this literally still has the carpet in the center of the stairs I'm going to go with I think poplar I think this is a hand carved poplar baluster uh, the door that the camera is in right now goes to the dining room and this door goes to the master bedroom, which we were in a little bit ago. Now let's head upstairs and show you what else is going on. There's quite a bit of stuff down there in the closet under the stairs and around the bottom of the stairs. And that's all kind of her eBay stuff. And I'm told that she's going to shut that sale down like today. Uh, and that anything that's left in here is coming with the house. So let's go into the first bedroom here. Again, these hold windows. Um, these are what they call a square sash with rounded glass. This trim and everything is just so ornate. But you can see, this is, this is untouched, okay? These people are the second owners from the original uh, builders, which was, I'm told, the Sutton family. And we've got a lot of those historical documents and stuff downstairs. I'm sorry to turn my back on the camera, but I don't want to trip over anything. Everything you see here comes with the house. We've got books, we've got dolls, we've got some furniture pieces. I'm told there's a couple of pieces up here of significance, and she will document those. We've got what I would think would be like a nursery, and then another bedroom back here. You'll notice the floor. This was the original stairs that came up from what is now the kitchen in the living room, okay? Uh, and what they did is they, they killed this stairway so that this can just be another bedroom going forward, and they didn't lose that space downstairs. In the light of, again, full disclosure and showing everything with this house, this is the original uh, half section of the basement in the original part of the house, which is just it's cool. It's the old stone. Uh, you know, Michigan basements have that name for a reason, and they were usually really short, maybe just about a five foot head height. This is easily seven, seven and a half foot head height down here. These old stones, how many, how many basements have a functioning hand pump? This is just so novel. Um, we've got an updated well over here, we've got a 4-inch well outside, a lot of updated plumbing, and we'll show you real quick in the mechanical area where the furnace and water heater are, there's even a pretty significant amount of storage over there.
we're basically going through the entire property. Um, we're, we're up here, so we're just going to finish up where we're at. Folks, I, I know I've just scratched the surface, but I've tried to point out as much as I can as we've gone through this entire property. We do have two open houses coming up, and that's all going to be on the website, roushhouse.com. That's when you can also register to bid. We'll be going live within a few days, and this auction ends, uh, I believe, the third week of August. That will all be documented in there. And if you have any questions, feel free to contact me. Uh, I think somebody is going to get a really neat historic property here for a good price.